Hello everyone, my name is Kermit Ball. I'm one of the community coordinators for Giant Software, the developers and publishers of the Farming Simulator series of games. Welcome to this special stream, I can get the words out, on Steam. Stream, Steam, you know. Uh, we are going to be bringing you the Farming Simulator Academy today, here live on Steam. And this is going to be aimed at some of you out there who are probably watching this right now. And you are thinking about buying Farming Simulator, but you haven't yet uh, pulled the trigger. Maybe you are intimidated because you think that it's going to be super hard and there's just too much to do. And in some ways you're not wrong. There is a lot to do, but the game doesn't have to be super hard because of the keyword I just said, the game. It is a video game at the end of the day. And the main goal is to have fun. So this is aimed at new players, but experienced players as well. Some of this advice may be handy for you, depending on your experience level. So the Farming Simulator Academy is available all the time on our website, farming, farming simulatorcom forward slash academy. You can get all the, the tutorials there. And I'm going to be skipping a lot of the basic lessons here today. Um, so if you are brand new, you'll want to start there, but we wanted to jump straight into the action and show you some of the actual field work and such. So we're going to start out in our combine harvester here. We are playing on the Elm Creek map. I would highly recommend any new player when you start up farming simulator 22 in the main menu, go to the career section, start a new career mode, pick new farmer as your difficulty level and then Elm Creek as your map. And if you do all of those things, when you load in, it'll give you, the, give you the option to do a short guided tour. I would recommend that you do that. And it'll actually start you in this very machine that I am running right now, this beautiful Deutschfar top liner combine harvester. You'll start right here on this field harvesting, uh, just like I'm doing now in my guided tour. We skipped the guided tour because we're showing you the different lessons of the academy and we're going to be jumping all around basically a few different sections there's a bunch of sections from anything like groundwork to the game basics to even forestry and animal lessons because we have those two things in farming simulator as well i don't want to overwhelm you with too much information today but just remember that it is a game and that you can kind of tailor it to be as easy or as hard on yourself as you want it to be. I recommend if you're a new player that you start small and then kind of work your way up, right? Learn how to harvest like I'm doing now. I would say just learn how to harvest and how to sow your fields. That's really all you need to know at the very beginning to get yourself going. We'll show you a few other things that can kind of help improve the yield of your fields later on too. So we're currently looking briefly at Crops 101, how to sow and harvest grains. We have wheat on this field, but sorghum, barley, oat, canola, and soybeans are also uh, classed under the grains in these lessons of the academy. So what's special about grains in the academy? It says they're the easiest crops to start with. I would agree with that for sure. If you play with seasonal cycles on, which we are currently playing with it on, you start in August and you can only plant canola. Keep that in mind. Uh, briefly, I'll show you really quickly. This is, if you press escape, you get your end game menu here. And this little calendar shows you the crop calendar. Green means you can plant it at that month. Orange means you can harvest it. So we're in August right now. So the only thing that we can plant is canola. That'll be important here in a moment when I am showing you guys how to seed. Um, with a harvester and a grain header, like we have right now, you can harvest all of those types of grains that I just previously mentioned. Harvesting wheat, barley, and oat can also produce straw for your animals. You see that little bit of straw over there on the corner. I actually dis disabled the straw swath, which you can do via the help window in the top left. If you uh, would like to have the straw, though, you'll want to make sure that it's enabled. If you have animals, you can use the straw for their bedding. Or you can just choose to sell the straw as well if you would like to do that. Uh, it, speaking of the, the help window at the top left, let me tell you a little bit about the UI, which is also included under the game basics section of the, 
the uh, Farming Simulator Academy. So the user interface at the top left, you have your help window. That'll show you the buttons. I am playing on PC, but I'm using a controller to control my vehicles, but I can also get keyboard controls like press B to turn off the harvester, press B to turn it on again. You can put the pipe out with O, so on and so forth. Let's keep harvesting for now, and uh, I'll keep going over that user interface for you. Top right is uh, basically information about the current weather, the upcoming weather. There's more detailed weather information in the in-game pause menu. And uh, you also see the current time and the time scale. We're at 921 and we're on half time speed. And then you see your money. Uh, you're not going to have this amount of money starting out, I'd be willing to bet. Unless you also find a mod on the mod hub to add money in, like <laughs> I did. For the sake of this stream, uh, I wanted to be able to just buy anything I needed to get things set up. Bottom left is your mini map. You can change that with nine on the keyboard. I prefer to keep it in this circular one, which acts as a compass so that I always know where due north is. And then bottom right, you see a couple of different things. Starting from left to right, if you have a machine or you're currently in a tractor or a, a machine that has a fill type, it'll show the fill level and what is filled in that machine. So right now we are harvesting wheat and we have 65% capacity of our harvester filled with wheat at the moment and then you also have the speedometer and the maintenance level is in orange the fuel level is in green and it shows the shifter there as well so that is the user interface and we are almost done with harvesting so two very brief glimpses there at a couple of lessons between game basics and harvesting your fields now we're gonna move on into some of the other jobs here momentarily. I'll be showing you a few different things from the intro to yield improvement and then each uh, individual lesson as well of those different jobs. We're gonna start with mulching here in a moment. So normally you would empty your harvester like we're in at the moment into a trailer and deliver it to your silo, but for the sake of time in this video, with our silo right nearby. I'm just emptying it directly into there. And I'm gonna leave it there as well for the time being. And I'm gonna hop in this beautiful Kloss tractor. We have a mulcher on the back. So now we're gonna be moving in to our next lesson, which is Groundworking 101 mulching. And this is all included in uh, as well as a brief overview in the intro to yield improvement lesson. So Kind of two for one at the moment. Now, this is a perfect opportunity for me to mention that just because I'm showing you these things on stream doesn't mean that you have to do every single one of these jobs starting out. Especially as a new player, I would recommend that uh, you don't do every single thing unless that's just really what you want to do. Um, do, do it the way that you're most comfortable with, but I would recommend learning, you know, just one or two things at a time. Uh, it even says in the Groundworking 101 mulching lesson, if you're looking on the Academy uh, page for this lesson on the website, again, farming-simulator.com forward slash Academy to find all of these. It even has a tip and says, it's okay not to mulch in case you have too much on your hands. Now, very quickly, I'll just flash up on screen this yield improvement graphic from the Academy. I am actually covering up the mulching part with the camera. Um, but those are all of the different things that you can do to improve your yield. Now, if you don't do those things, you're not getting a penalty. You're just missing out on the bonus. So you're still going to get your crop and you'll have plenty to do and plenty to work with, right? There's nothing wrong with skipping these steps. But for the sake of the video, I wanna show them all to you. So why do you mulch? Well, by mulching, you're applying a layer of cut biological material on top of the soil and it improves your soil. So you use this 
on any crop that leaves stubble behind. So wheat is one of them that we just harvested on this field. And so now that I've turned this on and it's lowered, we can, we can start going ahead here with our mulching. So you can also use a mulcher with olives and grapes to other crops in our game. Those are in their own lessons of the academy. There's a section for them because they behave a little bit differently. I'm not going to go into details about how they do or what's different about them because I don't want to overwhelm you. But if you want to get into growing olives and grapes, definitely check out those lessons on the Farming Simulator Academy. Okay. Also, there's forestry mulching. And again, I don't want to say too much about this and make it too confusing for you, but we do have forestry in the game as well. There's an entire subsection of Forestry 101 included on the Farming Simulator Academy and more beyond that. And using a mulcher in that, you remove bushes and tree stumps, so on and so forth. It behaves a little bit differently. We're only going to show you this type of mulching today. I think... I'm going to press H on the keyboard and hire a worker to finish mulching on this field for the sake of time. So while the worker is going, you can use AI workers to help you do work on your field in case you're playing single player and you need to get things done more quickly. Can I get to this tractor from here? Ooh, look at that jump. <laughs> so I wanted to hop into this machine. And this is, again, we're kind of jumping around here. This is going to be now going into a, a different section. We're going to show you how to plant and sow some crops now. Uh, I don't... Uh, I'm not sure the exact lesson for this because I don't have it in front of me at the moment. Uh, but you will find it in the Academy. Now, I was going to... I was going to do this a different way and this is a good opportunity to say that um, this game provides you a lot of options and different ways to do a job so I could if I wanted to choose to do this in a different way if we press P we can open up the shop and you can see the crazy amount of machines that are available in the game so Again, not wanting to overwhelm you all too much with things. I'm not going to go into too much detail here. But uh, you could basically, if you go to Groundwork 101 Plowing and Cultivating, it'll show you the different types of cultivating that you can do. But I'm going to skip that step, and I'm going to show you how. Because I think that as new players, it might be worth skipping this step and doing it this way yourself. In fact, this is something that most of our experienced players prefer to do as well. This machine that we have attached to this tractor right now is what is called a direct drill seeder. Now, what does that mean? To put it simply, it does multiple jobs at one time. You can skip cultivating. Normally, you would cultivate on its own and then come behind and sow your field after. And then you'd have to fertilize it. We're going to do all three of those things. Planting, cult should do it in order. Cultivating, planting, and fertilizing all with this one machine. So going back to the store menu real quick and looking under cedars, you can find these starting with this Pertinger Terrasim C6F that I have purchased for the use of this video. And it says right here, in the info, additionally, the seeder offers the possibility to seed directly. No previous cultivating or plowing is necessary. While we're here in the store menu, this bit of information is important. Also, this information down here is very important, especially the power requirements for the machine. So you have to make sure that you now buy a tractor that has this power to be able to operate at uh, max speed and efficiency with that machine. So... Again, I highly recommend that you pick one of these direct drill seeders. We are going to change the seed to canola. As we mentioned earlier, you can only plant things at certain times of the year if you have the seasonal growth calendar enabled, which we currently do in this 
in this stream. Now, if you want to disable it and you'd rather play without it, feel free to do that. Remember, at the end of the day, it is a game and it's about having fun. All right, so in the help window, we're going to lower our cedar. We've already got the seed selected as canola, which is what we want. And then we're going to turn it on. And then we're going to carry on with planting this field. So if I zoom out a bit, you can see that the ground texture is changing. And we are simultaneously cultivating, sowing, and fertilizing. So the most important part of the yield improvement lesson is fertilizing because it'll give you 45% once you have fertilized the field twice. And we are fertilizing it already once as we plant it. So now we'll only need to fertilize it one more time. Not too bad, right? It basically saves you yourself time later. It's going to cost you a little bit more to buy one of these machines and, and have the tractor that can run it. But if you kind of, you know, weigh it out of like the time you're saving and you don't have to buy multiple tools and have them all stored around your farm, I think it's worth it. That's why I wanted to show this to you for the sake of the stream today. With the Platinum Edition last year, we added an expansion to forestry in the game. I mentioned there's a whole lesson of that. With the Premium Edition and expansion, which is out now, we now have over 500 machines tools available. And that's just in the base game, not including all of the user-created content on our in-game mod hub that you can find. But over 500 machines and... Something like 20 crops now with the addition of red beet, parsnips, and carrots. We're not showing you any of that new stuff today because the academy uh, lessons are more focused on, you know, the basics of farming simulator. And while I, I, I don't want to say that, like, the new crops are, like, an expert level or advanced level, it is a little bit different in how they operate. So for the sake of showing you the academy today and, and showing you those lessons and gearing this to new players... That's the route that we've we've chosen to go with. So we're making quick work of this field. We're going to be done here in just a moment. So under the cultivating and plowing lesson, it talks a little bit more about these direct sowing machines. And it calls them special seeders. Um, they can cultivate, sow, and even fertilize at the same time, as I already explained. And it says their power requirements can be quite high. Of course, we talked about that already as well. But... As it says in the Academy, the investment is worthwhile if you want to save time by combining multiple working steps. They won't dig up stones, but weeds will grow faster. We'll be showing you how to remove weeds. And we're actually going to show you all three different ways that you can remove a different growth level of weeds here in just a moment. All right, I think I'm going to hire a worker again to finish this job. And we're going to get ourselves now set for what we're getting into next. And I think that we'll now show you very quickly Groundworking 101 fertilizing. So we've already fertilized once uh, as part of that. So to transition into that, I'm going to use tab to get to the vehicle I want. Here it is. So this Ultra tractor currently has this Amazon fertilizer spreader attached to the back of it and this is going to take no time at all i just wanted to use this as a way to simulate to you that you know the field that we just planted it is 50 percent fertilized because of using the direct drill and fertilizing at the same time eventually as time would pass in the game uh, you would go to the next month and then the crop would be at a different growth stage then you could fertilize it again and get it 100% fertilized by just doing it one more time. So to, to save ourselves time and not have to skip ahead in the calendar right now on the stream, I just wanted to fertilize this field and kind of simulate to you that that's how you could accomplish your second level of fertilization. There's so many other ways that you could do it too. You could use liquid fertilizer if you want inside of a sprayer. You could also use slurry and manure if you have it 
if you're raising animals and you have a lot of animal waste sitting around. Okay, that was like super quick on the fertilizing lesson, but we kind of already showed it to you and the, uh, we're combining so many lessons here on the stream, but I think that that is good for the sake of the stream. Now we wanna go look at weeds and we're gonna look at getting rid of weeds, weeding and spraying underground working 101. Now I'm inside this tractor, but I'm gonna exit the vehicle real quick. And I wanna look on foot here and you see the bottom right, you see the field info screen. This is super helpful for you to know the status of your field. You can also see it in the in-game menu on the map. You can change the filters. I'll show you that briefly here in a moment. But you see it's owned by us. You see that soybeans are growing on it, that the yield bonus is at 65%, that it's been fertilized 50% of the time, and it says weeds, small, and weeder, which means that the weeds are at the small growth stage and we can use a weeder. Now, it's important to know the different stages of growth for weeds because once it's past the small growth stage and it goes into medium or large weeds, it changes the tool that you can use to be able to finish that job. So right now we can use this one and we'll actually get, uh, be able to remove the small weeds. If you see the field ahead of us, you see the weeds are a little bit larger. We would not be able to use this to remove those weeds on that field. We'll have to use that machine that's at the other end of the field ahead of us. And then to our left over there, you can see the really large weeds. The only way to remove them is to use a sprayer with herbicide in it, which we'll also show you here in just a moment. I think I will hire a worker here to finish this. Now, if we look at the field info again, you see it says weeds medium, and it says to use a hoe. So this works in, in a very similar way to the weeder, it's just classified differently because it digs a little bit deeper. So if we go back to the store menu with P and we find the weeders, and you see in the info, weeders pull out small grown weeds. This one is the first hoe that you can buy and it pulls out small and medium weeds, improving the field state. Uh, I personally skip buying a weeder, even though they're cheaper, and I buy one of these hoes because it will cost you a little bit more starting out, but you can now do both small and medium weeds. You don't have to always catch them in the small growth stage, which can be very useful. Let's do a couple of passes with this, and then we'll move over to the sprayer as we see our AI worker there taking care of business. I'm gonna let him turn first. I would highly recommend that once you get into this game, play it with your friends in multiplayer. If you would rather play it uh, solo in career, that's fine, a lot of people prefer it that way. But you know, I have an AI worker over there. Imagine if that was a real friend and then you could have another friend in that sprayer, for example you know, all working together to do multiple things. Uh, multiplayer, I think, is a good way as well for new players to, uh, if you can find some experienced players to play with, especially, it's a way to learn the game better. You can really focus on just doing one thing over and over and over while your friends are doing the other jobs. And then once you get used to that, you can you know, move around. Farming Simulator 22 is cross-platform multiplayer for up to 16 players, though. So if you're on Steam and you're buying this game right now because of this video and you're convinced to give it a try keep that in mind that you can play with friends on any platform on pc mac xbox or playstation you can play with them and build a farming empire together and i love this game for the fact that it's it's a great game to play with your friends because you can sit and have a conversation you know it's really easy for me to be streaming this right now I can even look into the camera when I want because I know that there's no losing in this game and it's a little bit more slow paced than a lot of the multiplayer games out there, right? All right, let's let that worker, he's on his last pass. I think I'll just go ahead and finish this field myself here. We only have one pass remaining too. And then I'm gonna show you 
how to spray herbicide on large weeds. So with spraying herbicide, it's something you, it's not, it's not necessarily like a horrible thing if you do it, but if you are trying to play and get the maximum amount of yield as you possibly can, then you want to try to remove the weeds before they get to this large growth state. Because if you spray herbicide, you will actually get a small yield penalty for spraying the chemical onto the crop. It's still better to remove the weeds than to leave them for your yield, but just keep that in mind. I would recommend to buy the machine that I was just using so that you can remove small and medium weeds with it. But these sprayers, especially the self-driving sprayers like this one, they are a lot of fun, so, and they can get the job done very, very quickly. So there's nothing wrong with, uh, with using them if that's what you would rather do. So if uh, you get 20% more yield, by the way, if your field is free of weeds. Now, large weeds mature into even higher and blooming flowers. They're e easily distinguishable from your crops, as you can see. Like, they really stick out, even from a distance, don't they? This is your last chance, really, once you're at this level. Like, if you don't remove them now, then if your crop is ready to harvest, then you're losing some of your yield, right? So you want to try to avoid that. And it also works differently. Instead of removing the weeds with the sprayer of her with herbicide in it, we're actually killing the weeds. So you see the weeds just kind of turn brown. We're moving right along in this stream, though. I think that we only have one job left to show you for the stream today. So this has been a lot of fun, and uh, maybe we'll do more of these Academy lessons on Steam in the future. All right. Yeah, we're making quick work of this, with this wide sprayer. I'll show you guys something else cool here in a second that in kind of involves uh, both using the user interface and the help window. Um, so if you look at the top left now, see the like blue bars and it says partial width. Right now we're using the maximum width of this sprayer. But if we change the work width, you see that it changes the bars that are filled in. And we can go down all the way to just four meters if we want, which I'll do really quickly. So that's just going to be just like directly behind the sprayer. I miss a little bit there. Now let's go slightly more. I think I'll do, let's see, will 12 and a half meters be enough to get this last little bit? It may not quite be. Let's give it a try. I may need to go slightly more than that. I do. Let's go 21 and a half. And there we go. So if you do that, you're not going to waste as much of your material that you have loaded in. You can use this on sprayers, on fertilizer spreaders. And uh, I, think there, I think that's it. There might be something else that you can change the width onto. But there you have it. Okay, so now we finished showing you the weeds in that lesson. So I think that the time has come now for the final lesson, lesson, which is Groundworking 101 Soil and Grass Rollers. We're gonna be showing you a soil roller here. So after you plant your field and sow your crop, you'll want to use a roller. Again, this one's optional. Just like mulching, it only gives you 2.5% of extra yield improvement. So this is one along with mulching that I would recommend that if you don't want to do all of these things, just cut those out at the beginning until you're ready to do them. Also, I would recommend, you know, doing mulching and soil rolling once you're comfortable with them on small fields. But I don't know if personally I'd recommend doing them on really large fields because that two and a half percent is probably not going to be worth the amount of time that you have to put in to be able to finish a really large field. We've been showing you a lot of the smaller fields here today on the stream. So if you have smaller fields, when I play, if I have a lot of small fields, I do every step of yield improvement. I have everything turned on, even the stuff that we won't show you today. Because I just enjoy doing it, it gives you more to do throughout the year. 
Um, and you always have a job to do almost like every month, basically, if you do it that way. And you can play with the time sped up a little bit and really just, you know, kind of always have something to do instead of skipping time a lot. But if I have really large fields, it's not worth it to me to do that. Um, so I kind of skip some of these steps, especially the uh, rolling mulching. So there are grass rollers as as well, which you use after you cut the grass and it'll give you uh, a, a fertilization state on your grass basically and kind of reset it, get it ready for the next growth. These rollers though are used after sowing uh, and when the field's already cultivated and the seeds are in the soil. With a roller, you condense the soil and therefore increase its quality and the yield by two and a half percent. I really love the ground texture change on soil rolling. It's one of the more satisfying ones. I don't know what it is about it, but uh, the, the really cool ground textures to me, it's like painting a canvas and just another layer of uh, the relaxation added in for me in the game. All right. We're uh, coming to an end here. I think that I will hire a worker. Oh, the worker doesn't like that I uh, that I stopped this close. To the edge. Let's try that again. Here we go. So I want to hire this worker because I want to show you all just a couple of other things. Let's switch back to our combine. All right, we're sitting in our combine now. There's my guy and his giant software stuff. Look, same logo. <laughs> Just to prove it's me. So we showed you some of the Farming Simulator Academy lessons today. As a reminder, farming-simulator.com forward slash academy. Go through and use all of those lessons. It starts at the game basics. So start there, go through the game basics section. Then you've got Groundworking 101, you've got Crops 101, Animals 101, Animals 102, which is a little bit more advanced, Forestry 101, Machinery 101 as well. There's even stuff for the Platinum expansion in there for the Forestry. Again, I don't want to overwhelm you with too much with that, but that's one tool at your disposal for getting used to the game and learning it. Also, escape menu in the game. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Here's your in-game help menu. Gives you a lot of information here. Super useful in the game when you're new is looking at the crop types because you need to learn what all of these icons look like. Uh, what are some other good things? Oh, Discord, our official Discord server. Make sure you join that as well. Discord.gg slash giant software should be the link. Um, and then YouTube and our forums. Like there's so many awesome people within our community, players of our game, modders as well, that are willing to help you out along in your journey. YouTubers and our partners on there have a lot of good tutorials and, and things like that that you can learn from. And yeah, I think that's about it. Our forums as well, if you are kind of old school and you prefer that, they're available via our website. You can find them there. Um, but that's just, you know, one of a few ways that you can learn. The Academy as well um, that we kind of showed you in these lessons today is a fantastic way to learn as well. So, um, yeah, I think that's it, everyone. It was an awesome time hanging out with you all on Steam. I hope that this helped calm your nerves a little bit. Remember, Farming Simulator is a game. You can tailor it to be as difficult or easy on yourself as you want it to be. You can go into the end game settings and toggle things off to make things easier on yourself starting out. And then really, I would suggest if you're a new player, just focused on harvesting and planting and do those two things until you're comfortable with them and then start branching out and moving on to other things when you're ready to do so. All right, keep being awesome, everyone. Thanks for hanging out and have a great rest of your day.